before we create our game let us actually take a look at the game that we are going to create so here i have my project that i name monster chase and if i run the game this is our main menu and we can select the left character or the right character so if i select the left one we are here in our gameplay we can go left we can go right we need to jump over the monsters that are trying to attack us if they touch us they are going to kill us if well we do not see that and we cannot go outside here we can put bounds so that our player will not go outside we can see that later on in the game but now we are going to die and the ghost caught us when we die we are going to restart the game i can go back and i can select the other players so here we have two players so this one is the black player and now here we can simply move him and we can well avoid the, the monsters excuse me so we are not allowed to touch the monsters as we just saw if they touch us they are going to kill us that we just saw now so this is our game we can also implement a nice score which will be easy after we implement our game and we are going to see how can we create all of these monsters so here we see the monsters running and let me just try to jump over this one so i did succeed and jump over this one and we are going to see how can we spawn our monsters and randomly well spawn their speed and also well spawn how many monsters so now we saw three monsters in a row sometimes we don't see them too often but as we see here sometimes they come in a row and the others are faster than some others or excuse me some of them are faster than the others so anyway i'm going to stop talking here and let us dive in our course or let us dive into our tutorial and see how can we actually create this awesome game I am here in an empty project which is a 2D project of course and I have named it Monster Chase and we are going to start by creating a new folder which I'm going to name Scenes and here we are going to save our scene so on a Mac you can hold Command and press S or on Windows you can hold Control and press S or you can simply go under File and click on Save Scene in order to save this scene select the scenes folder and save it as a gameplay scene so name it gameplay and hit enter so now we are in our gameplay scene next i'm going to import our assets so here i have my sprites i'm simply going to drag and drop them here in our unity editor in order to import them so here we have our background our enemies our ground the moon the players and the player select buttons so let us first configure our players or animate them for that here i'm going to go and create a new folder which is going to be called animations and here i'm going to create a new folder which is going to be player animations and here we are going to have our player one and player two so player one animations and also player two animations so folder two this is going to be player two animations and now we are going to go in our sprites folder select our player sprite sheet here and i'm going to configure it here in our import settings so i'm going to set the sprite mode to multiple because this is a sprite sheet i'm going to uncheck this generate mip maps because this is mostly for 3d and we see the size of our sprite here it's 1103 by 494 so I can set here the size to be 1248 instead of 1024 just to save a little bit of graphics quality but even if we set it at 1024 because it's not that a difference between, between 1103 and 1024 we will not see any change but I'm going to set it at 2048 and hit apply and I'm going to go in our sprite render and slice our sprites so simply click here slice in this top left corner and click slice here and simply hit apply in order to apply this to our sprite sheet and now we have all of these sprites individually cut well into single pieces now in order to animate our players i need to select all of these so we are not going to select the first image for our player because this is going to be his idle animation but we are going to select these images where the player is moving so from player 1 up to player 6 select all of these holding shift and simply drag and drop them here in our scenes folder or excuse me in the scene we can click on this animation window and if you don't have this window go here under window and click on this animation and it will open this window 
it will be maybe positioned here or I don't know here you can simply drag it here to reposition it wherever you like so we can click on this animation window and click on the player here in the hierarchy panel and if I zoom in and play the animation here on this play button we are going to see our player walking so we see that the animation is working now in order to create our idle animation I need to drag this window here because now we need to click here where it says players so click here and here we are going to create a new clip but before that I need to save the animations that we have already created so here we have these two animations so the animation and its controller and we are going to save them here in our player animations and player one animations I'm also going to rename this player one in our hierarchy panel so now what we need to do is we need to click here where it says players and click on create new clip to create a new clip and save it in our animations player animations and player one animations this is going to be our idle animation i'm going to set these samples or frames per second to be 12 and now i'm going to drag this first image which is going to be our idle animation and now i can simply move this panel right here and if i go into the animator panel and if you don't have it go under window and click on this animator and here we have these two animations i'm going to select this animation and rename it here in the inspector to our walk animation and now we have the idle and the walk animation i'm going to set the idle as the default state so i can right click it and set it to be default layer state so now our idle animation is the default animation now on to make a transition from idle to walk because when we are walking we want to display the walk animation when we are not walking we want to display the idle animation i can do that by going here into parameters so here we see that we have layers and parameters so click on parameters and click on this plus sign here and here we can select a float an integer boolean or a trigger i'm going to select a boolean i'm going to name it walk and now I'm going to create transitions by right clicking on the animation and click on make transition and now clicking to the animation where I want to make that transition to so from idle to walk and from walk back to idle and now I'm going to set the conditions when I want these transitions to happen practically so I'm going to select these white arrows and this is the transition from idle to walk and here we have these conditions in the inspector panel I can click on this plus sign and we can select from our conditions or parameters here so here currently we have walk so I'm going to select walk so when walk is equal to true we are going to go from idle to walk and we are going to go from walk back to idle when our walk is false and we are going to use this in our code in order to move our player so practically we are done with the player and now I'm only going to take the player and here in the sprite render add this player zero image just in order to set this image to be, to be excuse me the default image for our player now I'm going to create our other player which is going to be from players 9 up to players 14 and drag him here and I'm going to rename him to player 2 and I'm also going to drag these animations or the animation and its controller here in our player 2 animation and also take this and put it here so the animation panel and also create an idle animation for our other player so here I'm going to go player 2 animations going to name this one idle and again drag and drop the player 8 image here and set the sample rate to 12 or 12 frames per second and practically we need to go again in our animator panel select our player 2 this is going to be our walk animation so walk animation let me just go here in our animations to see if i did something wrong so no we don't have here nothing okay everything is okay so here we have this walk animation and idle animation again the idle is going to be the default one and i'm going to make a transition from idle to walk and vice versa and also I'm going to create here a boolean parameter walk and I'm going to set the conditions so when walk is equal to true we are going to go from idle to walk and when walk is equal to false we are going to go back from walk to idle animation 
and I am also going to select our player 2 and drag our player 8 as the default image in the sprite render component. I'm also going to go here and create a prefabs folder and inside of it I'm going to create player prefabs, so player prefabs and here I'm going to save our players. But before that I'm going to select both of them and tag them here with the player tag which is the tag that we have here automatically with Unity. And I'm also going to apply a box collider to them because, well, we need to detect collision. And for that, we need to use a box collider. And I'm also going to edit the collider. Click on this edit button here below box collider 2D. Here we have this edit button. Click on it. And I'm going to reposition the collider somewhere around here. So like this, this is our collider. And this is for the player one. And I'm also going to apply a rigid body 2D on him. And for the player 2, I am also going to select the player 2 and let me just tweak the settings a little bit. So something like this. So I'm satisfied with it. And I'm also going to apply a rigid body 2D on him. And now we are simply going to drag and drop them from the hierarchy panel in our prefabs folder in order to create the prefabs or reusable game objects out of our players. So prefabs are practically reusable game objects. That means I can now simply delete these two from the scene and I can drag and drop these two prefabs and we have the same game objects. If I did not create prefabs out of these game objects and I have deleted them from the hierarchy panel, everything that we just did, adding the collider, creating animations, adding rigid body, we would need to do that again. So this is a nice way to save a little bit of time and also create a couple of reusable game objects. So we are done for this video setting up our, setting up our players. In the next video we are going to see how can we create our level and then we are going to begin to script our players.